Cal and welcome to my world and welcome to the year 2021 where things are still the same as 2020. Who'd have thought it? It's not like turning to 2021 was magically going to make things all better. Anyway, pickups videos time. Uh, quick note, yes the lighting does suck in here. It's January in the UK it's pretty much dark outside all the time anyway. I only have my room light. I can't afford nor do I have the room for a lighting setup. So this is just what we're going to have to deal with for a while. So yeah, most of my videos for the next month or so at the very least are going to look like this. Yeah, production values. So anyway, pickups videos, let's get started. I've got a lot, and I do mean a lot, of games to get through. And these aren't even all of them. I have split up into a, uh, the pile into another video, but you know, that's going to come later. So, yeah, let's just get started, shall we? First up, not a video game, but video game related, and that is Pikmin 3 Deluxe Coaster Set. And this was from Nintendo. Every so often, Nintendo in Europe do have some physical rewards for on my Nintendo. Uh, where you use platinum points to redeem the reward and then you just pay postage. Uh, yeah, so I've had a few posters and things like that from them before, a couple of notebooks, and now the coaster set. Not a fan of Pikmin 3, particularly, just because I haven't fully played through it yet. I do own it on the, the Wii U now, I bought it last year, I think. But yeah, I definitely want to really get into it. I'm not going to use the coasters, they're just going to go there, you know, nicely uh, on display somewhere. Next is a PlayStation 1 game that I wasn't even aware of until sometime last year. Uh, there's a game coming out soon uh, for the Nintendo Switch and a couple of other platforms, I think. PS4, PC, I can't remember, called Clive and Wrench. And it's you know, a 3D platformer. I uh, am back in this game uh, through Patreon, so I've uh, been able to play lots of um, alpha releases of it. I have stopped most of this year playing them because the game is going to be coming out hopefully sometime early this year. I pre-ordered a physical edition of it on the Switch. Yep, that's nice. But one of the games that was an influence uh, for the developer of this game is a Muppets game. I know, and I've never even heard of it. It's a 3D platformer and it is Muppet Monster Adventure. When I first found out about this, I thought, that looks interesting, I'll look it up. It was going for about 40 quid. Everywhere. I uh, looked it up again not too long ago, and there was one at £15, but the disc was scratched to hell, and this one at £20, I thought, that's half the price of what they were a few months ago, I'm going to buy it. And I did. And I've played through the first level so far, completed it 100% just because it's so fun, and it's kind of like... It's got aspects of Spyro the Dragon, a bit of Banjo-Kazooie, and Crash Bandicoot all rolled into one, uh, but based on the Muppets. It's really, really fun so far. For just the first level alone, 100% completed it, got all the collectibles, did everything you could. Very happy with that so far, looking forward to playing through the entire game. Next, a DS game, nice and cheap. Uh, I enjoy these types of games. It's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? The second edition. Yep, it's just the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire based on the TV show, the UK version here of course. You answer questions, try and get to a million. Um, <laughs> I've done utterly terrible so far on this version. I haven't won the million like I did on the PS1 version. Um, did a video on that. Uh, just, I might link below if I remember. Big, who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I think it's uh, Big Cow Wants to Be a Millionaire is the title of the video. Where I legitimately... Believe it or not, took a few uh, tries, but I legitimately answered all the questions in a row and yeah, I recorded the footage and then I just went back and recorded the you know, close-ups of me and things like that. It's a fun video, I always enjoyed that one, but yeah, who wants to be a millionaire for the DS for the game. So PSP games now, first is Ridge Racer 2. Wasn't even aware there was a sequel on the PSP. The PSP version is very, very good. And the sequel, also very, very good. Big fan of the Ridge Racer series, love the way that the drifting works. Just really, really fun to go through and uh, complete races. So, yeah, another one on the old handheld there. 
And then we have Untold Legends Brotherhood of the Blade, an action RPG similar, I suppose, to Diablo. Uh, there are two of these on the PSP, and I've owned one literally, I think, since I bought my PSP about five or six years ago in one of the <laughs> one of the previous uh, pickups videos. And I could never remember which one I owned when I would come across one of them in the wild. So it's like, do I own that one? Don't I own that one? I don't want to buy it in case I've already got that one. But I finally came across this one cheap, looked up on my list. It's like, yes, I don't own this one. So picked it up. I haven't played much of it yet, but uh, yeah, it's a typical action the RPG style game. Now for some Switch games. I've got quite a few here. Uh, thanks to sales and stuff over Christmas and before then with Black Friday and things. That's how far back some of these pickups go. A lot of these were cheap, such as The Legend of K Anniversary. The remaster of the old uh, like PS2 platformer. Actually platformer. I haven't got around to testing this one actually. I only just got it a couple of days ago. But it only costs like £6.90 or something. So when Switch games are that cheap and it's something that I'm interested in, I have no problems picking them up. As you know, getting cheap Switch games can be difficult, especially with you know the big AAA titles. So you know, lesser titles like Legend of K, I'm happy to pick up for that price. So looking forward. I will have some footage on the screen as I'm talking about this. I will record some before I uh, edit the video. Next is a game called Ion Fury. Now, actually, I think I saw this going up uh, on Limited Run a while back. It's like, wait a minute, you can already buy that physical over here. Must just be an American thing where you can't get it physical. So yeah, I picked this up nice and cheap. And it's built, I think, is it using the um, the Doom engine or something? Does it say on the back anywhere? It's basically sort of, you know, the, the Doom, the old Doom and Quake style games. It's built on those type of engines. Or the Duke Nukem, even. Might even be that one. And it looks and plays like those, except you're a female. Fun as hell, and uh, this physical version in the UK came with uh, what's this? Uh, some stickers, and there's a, a nice little art book in there as well, as the cartridge. And yep, yeah, the game is fun as hell, as you would expect from one of those older style PC shooters. Next, a game that... Uh, yep, yeah, <laughs> a game that I wasn't aware was even out on the Switch physically. Um, I have this on PC, I have played it a lot, and it is Mad Games Tycoon. I'm a big fan of like game developer tycoon style games. I've got a bunch on the PC. Um, yeah, so this one uh, is a lot more in-depth than some of them. It, there is a learning curve when you first play it. But once you understand what's going on with everything, then you know, it really opens up a lot. You build your own um, office and things. You actually build physically build the rooms, kind of like your uh, theme hospital and that sort of thing. We put down your desks and all your different uh, equipment and things. You build a staff room. And once you really get up with it and have everything in store, you have your own production uh, office and things, you know, you're printing the CDs and you're packaging them and shipping them out. And yeah, it's really fun once you get into I did have some issues playing this um, on the TV mode, I think. It played better in handheld. Or the other way around, I can't remember. I tested this out in like November last year. So it has been a while, it's gone out of my memory. But yeah, only one mode really played well. Although, to be fair, I think it's probably still better on PC, but if you don't have a PC that will play simple games like this, get the Switch version. It's also on PS4 as well, I think, which is very odd. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Oh, next is a game that I own digitally. So I haven't opened this one. But it was uh, from Super Rare Games. They're the kind of like a UK version of limited run games. And this is Freedom Finger. A fantastic side-scrolling shooter. I think I've shown it off in a previous pickups video when I had it digitally. Uh, your ship is based like you know, a fist. You can punch things. You can grab hold of enemy ships and then use their weapons to fire. Or you can throw them. Uh, it's got a really great sense of humour. It's really, really fun. Uh, Super Rare Games. It also came with... Uh, cards and sticker 
yeah the, I think there's a, a little art book inside as well maybe some other goodies I haven't opened it yet because I have no need to I own the game digitally uh, I did want the PS4 version that was on the limited run games but unlike most limited run games now where they go up for pre-order and they're there for a full month no, for some reason, Freedom Finger was randomly just uh, limited to like 2,000 or 4,000 copies and when I found out this about an hour later, they were out of stock. So no physical PS4 version for me, so fuck you limited run games and your shitty business practice. Yeah. <clears throat> so, next we have a manual for Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, this was bought on Etsy. Uh, I'll uh, try and link the seller down below if I remember and yeah it's just a, a nice little instruction manual really well printed and put together uh, for Super Mario Odyssey and of course fits nicely inside the switch cases that was nice it was on sale uh, for I think this was on sale during Christmas they also had a Black Friday sale yeah so that's cool next from Nintendo of course <sighs> Their, their shitty business practice and that this is uh, no longer going to be on sale uh, at the end of March because for people apparently to celebrate their biggest best franchise the franchise that literally made them <sighs> yeah Super Mario 3D All-Stars yeah I did buy it straight away, pre-ordered it and got it to make sure I got it, the whole fear of missing out crap, but I also really love two of these games at least. Not the biggest fan of Mario 64, I still think it's a good game, it's just the worst of the 3D ones in my opinion. So I played Galaxy first and holy hell did I love it, probably more than ever, I thought it played tremendously on the Switch. I played through most of it uh, in TV mode. Um, he used the Wii, uh, the um, gyro controls on the Switch controller. Plays fantastic like that. I also played some of it in handheld uh, with the touch screen, and that was also pretty fine. Uh, had a couple of issues here and there with a few levels, but for the most part, it played fantastic in handheld. And I don't think I've played through Mario Galaxy as quickly as I have with the Switch version. I don't know. It just seemed easier this time maybe it's because i played through it a bunch of times i kind of know what i'm doing already so yeah the problem with mario 64 and sunshine <sighs> thankfully the problems seem to have been fixed when the games first came out with mario galaxy uh, sorry mario sunshine there was no gamecube support which meant you didn't have the analog uh, pressure sensor triggers to use you had to use the different buttons and I, I find that the uh, the what do we call them the the triggers at the top of a basic switch controller the joy cons are too close together so you kind of have to hold them like this you know to to do which press you want whether you want to stand still and spray or you want to move around and spray and you have to sort of have your fingers all the time hovering over them um, but they're too close together and it's just uncomfortable and I don't have big hands I mean I, I'm five foot four my hands are in proportion with me I'm not a large man you know tall wise yeah large that way <coughs> yeah so I don't have particularly big hands and I was struggling with it I can't imagine what people with bigger hands are like and uh, plus they removed the inverted controls uh, for flood as well which Normally I hate inverted controls, but considering I've been playing Super Mario Sunshine since it was released in, what, 2002? I'm so used to those controls, I could not get the hang of it at all without the inverted controls. And the uh, the analog stick on a Switch controller is just not as good as the one on a GameCube controller, which made it a little more difficult as well. And the same for Super Mario 64. I didn't think it controlled as well on the Joy-Cons. I've heard it's a lot better on a Pro controller, but fuck, paying £53 for a controller. Games are cheaper than that. I do not want to pay more than a game for a controller to play the game. Yeah, but like I said, they have patched it in now so you can use a GameCube controller. Fantastic. And yes, inverted controls are indeed there as well and it's so much better. So it's finally a very good collection. Yes, they are technically just 
emulated games on here, but they're still three fantastic games, so I'm not that bothered. It would have been nice if they weren't limited until March, because that's just shit. And also, to complete the collection, I got a Super Mario 3D All-Stars manual from the same Etsy seller as the, uh, the Mario Odyssey one. And yes, this is very nice as well. It's thicker as well because it's got all three games in there. It's even got checklists um, for sprites and things, which I won't be using. I'm not going to ruin the manual, but yeah. I am glad I bought this. Uh, you can still buy it, of course. It's not out of stock in most places. And it has gone down. You can get it for like 35 quid now. I paid a whole 42 for it when it first came out, which is better than £50, which is what most sites were selling it at. Yeah, and I even got a copy for my friend for Christmas because uh, I'm nice like that. And I may have got it on a sale. <laughs> yeah. And lastly for soon. Lastly, for su <coughs> Hold on a moment. <sighs> yep, yeah, okay. Lastly, for Switch games, some limited run games that I pre ordered way back early in 2020. Finally released. I'm still waiting on some, but yeah. And that is the Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast and Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. Physical copies for the Switch. A nice little box comes in and each one is separate. Very, very sexy. Now, I did buy Jedi Outcast digitally when it was first released, um, but then I decided to hold off on Jedi Out uh, Academy once I realised they were getting a physical version. So I'm very happy with those. I loved these two games on the original Xbox. I uh, still own them. They are... Uh, down there somewhere, so I'll watch all them off, but yeah, really, really fantastic games. Um, I prefer Jedi Academy to Outcast just because you start off as a Jedi in training at least in Academy. Outcast takes a few levels before you get your Jedi stuff, and I was never a big fan of actually going around shooting. Uh, it's a Jedi Knight game, I want to use a lightsaber and force powers. Now, I understand a lot of people like um, non-Jedi stuff when it comes to Star Wars, like you know, The Mandalorian recently. Yeah, that's fantastic. And that's great if that's what the game is. But the game is Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast. I do not want to fire blasters unless I fucking have to. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a nice collection there for Limited Run. Still waiting on Episode 1 Racer as well from them. Cannot wait for that. Whew. Right. PlayStation 4 games now. Oh boy. Probably one of my most disappointing games of 2020. And I know it's going to come as a surprise to a lot of people. Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Thankfully, did not buy this at launch. I waited for a price drop. Probably should have waited for a bigger price drop. But yeah, I did pick it up because I really wanted to play it. Now, my history with Crash Bandicoot. Love the original trilogy on the PS1. And, of course, Crash Team Racing. Fantastic. Even like Crash Bash back in the day I was a kid, I didn't know any better. <laughs> Once it moved off the PS1, and, of course, along with Crash Bash, they got different developers and things like that. Yeah, you got very mixed quality with the Crash Bandicoot games. I was just never a fan of the series since then. The remaster trilogy was announced, came out, looked fantastic, played like shit. Hated it. They changed the jumping, but kept everything else the same. So you had new physics with old levels, and it didn't mesh well for me personally at all. Crash Team Racing came out. Fantastic. Spyro Trilogy remaster came out. I was never the biggest fan of Spyro as a kid. Loved the trilogy. Toys for Bob did that. So when Toys for Bob were announced for making Crash Bandicoot 4, I had hope. And like most hope and hopes and dreams in 2021, they were crushed. Because it, it, it just doesn't feel right when you're moving. It feels slow and sluggish compared to the older games, which is really weird. Uh, when I jump, I don't feel like I'm in full control of what's happening. Even when I press the button, I don't know if he's going to jump at that exact second. It always felt like there was a slight delay every now and then. I didn't like the level design for the most part. Enemies were really weird in that 
sometimes they just put them straight in front of you when you'd like drop off a platform it's like you didn't know they were there they'll kill you immediately it's like what the fuck or they'd be an enemy that you don't know how to kill it's like okay i'll crash bandicoot i'm gonna spin into this fucker and you would die I don't know why. And then sometimes you'd spin into them by accident. It's like, oh, I spun into that one. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, wait, it killed him this time. I don't know why. I don't know how. Yeah, it just never felt good. Enemies felt kind of weird. Yeah, I just... I have, I have not been enjoying my time with it. I have played uh, quite a bit through the story mode now. I haven't got up to when you can play as Neo Cortex yet. Just because I've been playing like one level a week now. I was not that interested anymore, and seeing the utter chaos of the completion, but uh, the completion criteria for this, God forbid, if you want to try and hundred percent, well, hundred and six percent this, you're not gonna have a fun time. Even on the first level, I thought, okay, it's a new Crash Bandicoot. I'll try and get all the boxes. Missed one. No idea where it is. I'm, I'm literally going to have to go through my footage at some point, probably when I'm editing this, and try and point out where the missing box is. Because they are in such obscure places, it is stupid. It is bad level design. Yeah. Not had fun with that at all, sadly. Big disappointment. Next we have Resident Evil Origins Collection. And this is Resident Evil Zero and Resident Evil remaster editions i had no idea that the original resident evil was on the ps4 you can get resident evil 0 to 7 on the playstation 4 which is insane to me that's awesome so yeah love the original resident evil big fan of it i've never played zero can't wait to get into those and of course if i'm getting resident evil games might as well get the resident evil 2 remake wasn't the biggest fan of Resident Evil 2 as a kid because I, I played 3 before it so I always preferred 3 but yeah very much looking forward to diving into the remake from what I've played so far yeah really really good looks fantastic and plays nicely and I will at some point pick up the rest PS3 game now um, in one of my previous videos I don't know if it was a pickups or a um, yeah, I think it was a, yeah, it was a pickups video. I got the uh, Sly Trilogy, finally. Always wanted to play them, but getting them on PS2, they're like 20 quid each these days. It's like, I don't want to pay that, so I bought the Trilogy. It's like, okay, I'd better pick up the fourth one, Thieves in Time. I don't know what it is about this one, but just after playing the first part of the opening level, it just didn't feel as good to me. Um, not sure what that is, if that's an issue with just me or the game. But yeah, I wasn't really feeling it compared to what I played with the trilogy when I bought that. So, uh, yeah, one day I will play through it all, once I play through the, uh, the, the trilogy. Now, some Nintendo Wii games. <laughs> yes, we're still going about halfway now. And we have Scarface, The World Is Yours. Always wanted to uh, play the Scarface game, just never got around to it. I haven't even seen the film yet. The original or the Al Pacino version or any other bloody version they released. I don't know why. Because I went on a huge Al Pacino kicker a number of years back and watched a bunch of his films and just never got around to Scarface. Don't know why. But yeah, I wanted to play the game and I got the, uh, the nice Wii version because why not? Um, I really love the Godfather uh, Black Hand Edition uh, on the Wii. So I figured, hey... Maybe uh, the Scarface game will be good as well on the Wii. So far, yeah, it's pretty fun. You go around, you know, shooting. You start off the level with the, you know, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> part. And uh, it seems interesting enough so far. I don't know what the uh, the rest of the game is like. I think it's kind of like an opening world style, similar to um, Grand Theft Auto and the, the, the Godfather game. But I think it's got less stuff to do in the world. That's just what I've heard. I haven't played through it yet, but yeah. Scarface. Then, uh, also for the Wii, I picked this up recently for the PS3, but I thought I'll get the Wii version because there are extra levels in the Wii version over the PS2, the PS3, the Xbox 360, whatever other versions of it there are, which is crazy to me. Yeah, and that is uh, Star Force. Star Force. Star Wars is literally written on my t shirt. Star. Well, I was Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2. 
I'm a massive fan of the original, especially the Wii version. That's my favourite way to play it. The sequel, I was always disappointed because it's so bloody short. Uh, I played through recently, the, not the PS3 version. I actually played it on the PC. Yes, because I got that cheap as well. Played through, and yeah, it's fun enough for the most part. But it only lasts like four hours and then it's done and it feels like the halfway point of the game. It, you sort of, it ends like with a big cutscene, you think, oh wow, okay, what's next? And then the credits roll and it never happens because there was never a sequel or anything, but it just felt like it should have been the halfway point of the game. But yeah, um, I actually had a lot more fun than I thought playing through this just to test it out with the motion controls and things. Yes, it's dumbed down with what you can do and force abilities and combos and things compared to the original. But it's still a decently fun game and I will play through it at some point just to see what the extra levels are like. Because I haven't played it since it came out on the Wii. I got it illegally. And uh, yeah, I can't remember what the levels are like. Let's see, what, what else have we got down here? All right, yep. Uh, PlayStation 2, we have Ridge Racer 5. Another Ridge Racer game. The fifth one in the series. Ridge Racer 4 was tremendous on the PS1. Ridge Racer 5 on PS2. It felt slow to me. There wasn't that sense of speed from it. And I get that it was just the, oh, the first level, the opening car, you don't have all the unlocks and things and all the cool cars and the speedy ones, but still, it just felt so slow compared to all the other games, even when you first start. A little bit weird there, but yep, um, I probably will play through it at some point in time, because I love the Ridge Racer series, and um, we'll see if it gets any better. Lastly, we have a bunch of original Xbox games. Very much a fan of collecting for them, and what I'm doing now, as well as a couple of exclusives and things like that that I don't already own, I'm also picking up some multi-platform games that I might own already on PS2 or even GameCube, because the Xbox versions do tend to be better. Right, first up though, we have Roadkill. I only discovered this one rather recently, and it's a mix between Twisted Metal and Grand Theft Auto, in that you've got this open world but you drive around in a car and there's lots of vehicular combat in it because you go around you know, um, using weapons on your vehicle to destroy uh, other cars and things like that as well as killing people, you do missions. Yeah, uh, it's really fun so far. It's got a, a metal heavy metal rock soundtrack as well. Um, yeah, I had fun uh, playing through that. Next we have True Crime, New York City. Um, I'm going to pick up all of the, both, the true true, true, both of the True Crime games for the uh, the Xbox at some point. So I'll just need the uh, the LA one, I think it is. Yep, and uh, I guess it's sort of a, an action a game. I don't know if it's open world or not. I haven't played enough into it. But yeah, just from the opening thing, you know, you go around shooting. It seems fun enough. I actually enjoyed how the shooting work. I've uh, read a couple of reviews where they hate how the shooting is, but just from the small bit I've played so far, I thought it was really fun. So yeah, I'll uh, definitely have to play through that at some point. As I keep saying, I will get to all of these games at some point. I mean, we're probably going to be in lockdown for another five years. I'll uh, easily go through all of these games. <laughs> right, next we have a only on Xbox, Xbox exclusive, Quantum Redshift. And uh, this is kind of like a... Uh, an F-Zero Wipeout style futuristic racer, um, probably closer to Wipeout because there were some weapons as well. Um, yeah, seems alright so far. It was dirt cheap, completed box, very nice. Uh, yeah, I'm always looking for racing games these days, just something new to try out. And I always like the only on Xbox games as well. So I'm a big fan of the original Xbox, so I like getting the exclusives for it. Next, a game that I do have on the PS2, but I wanted it on the Xbox, because better, and that is Gun, set in the uh, the Wild Wild West. Um, yeah, go around uh, shooting things and hunting and stuff so far, just from what I've played of it. Again, I haven't played much just to test the footage, but yeah, it seemed really, really fun. Um, yeah, hopefully it's better than uh, the Red Dead Redemption, at least. Uh, I need to play through Red Dead Revolver at some point in time, see what I feel about that. Because I was not impressed with Red Dead Re Re Revolution. Yeah. 
story was atrocious. I mean, literally one of the worst stories in a video game ever because there was barely a story. But the game was kind of like, oh, it's a big story, but it's not. And setting the Wild Wild West seems cool until you realise half the map is just nothing. Anyway, yeah, gone. <laughs> then we have Reckless, the Yakuza missions, which confuses the hell out of me. Right, where is it? Yeah. It's set in Hong Kong. But it's about the Yakuza. Surely if it was in Hong Kong you would maybe think it was the Triads, perhaps? I don't know, maybe the Yakuza were too busy, I don't know. Being in Japan! <sighs> I don't really know. Um, not as fun as what I was expecting. Uh, you just The first mission, you, you're in a, a car and you have to smash some other cars off the road, damage them and things, and it doesn't control particularly well. So I was a bit disappointed with that one, because I thought it was going to be a fun game. Perhaps not. Next is a game... If I can pick it up. This one was originally the last game on my Xbox want list. And then I decided, you know what, I'm going to add a bunch of games to the want list that are already on other systems that I might even own, but I'm going to get the Xbox version. So this originally ended my Xbox want list, and that is Dr. Muto, a 3D platformer that I've been after for quite a while now. It is available on other systems, but again, I want the Xbox version. Always love 3D platformers. Uh, the camera seems a bit wonky in places, but uh, probably something you can get used to. It might be better in uh, the actual levels. Uh, just in the hub world, things are a bit small and tight, so might not be the best there. But yeah, Dr. Muto, crazy scientist who accidentally destroys the world. Oops! So he's off to try and fix it. With science! Yeah. Whew. And lastly... I know, it's been a <laughs> Oh, lastly, we have the Grand Theft Auto collection. The double pack. Grand Theft Auto 3 and Vice City. Comes in this nice box. Opens up. And you've got them there. Had to buy this twice. Because <laughs> the first one um, never showed up. Yay! Uh, so I bought it again and thankfully both are complete in box with the maps and everything so that's cool and I was very surprised by how good they look on the original Xbox and how well they play with the controller compared to what I'm used to on the PC versions. I, I never found that these ones played particularly well on the PC. They were made for keyboard and mouse I think obviously being PC, and I, 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 there's that much to do in a Grand Theft Auto game. I always felt, you know, the keyboard and mouse, there was too, too much with that. And setting up a controller, forget about it. I've once spent about an hour and a half trying to set up, um, using an external like controller mapper, trying to set up for Grand Theft Auto Vice City on the PC. And there's just that many different options for when you're walking, when you're in a car, when you're out of the car, when you're doing this, when you're doing that. It's like, I don't know which button should be for what. So I just always gave up. But yeah. Um, <laughs> both of these, like I said, they play really well. And of course, you do have the great addition with the Xbox of being able to burn a CD onto the hard drive and play on the radio in the game, which, also, which always makes things fun. And like I said, they look fantastic on there. So, very, very happy with that. And it was a lot cheaper than I thought. I thought this was going to be really expensive. Eight quid! And that's kind of the average price. It's sort of like between eight to twelve quid, depending on the uh, the condition. Yeah. So, those are all my recent pickups for this video. There will be the next one, which I think is actually the 50th pickups video. So, stay tuned for that. It'll probably be... I might wait until... February to do that one uh, just because I do have another couple of games on the way wait for everything to come in and then I'll do it But yeah, I'm Big Cal. Thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of what I bought today Let me know if there's anything that I should buy based on what I bought and I'll see you again next time